Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have an Emerald Belveth and an Emerald Echo and yes, when you get 10th on a website and you go 2-4-3 and you win the game, you probably got a little bit carried. However, let me show you why it's a little bit more intense than that and also how you, when you have your most worst games ever, you can still win. Because that's a whole lesson here, right? How can I still win even though I'm basically defecating on the map with my skills? Now. We obviously have here a Kaisa Soraka versus a uh, Draven Nami, who's basically standing still AFK. We have an Echo doing the red side quadrant. So all of the regular stuff that you would expect to see. Can we follow the Belveth, please? Thank you so much. Let's zoom out as well. There we go. A bit more perspective for the good moments of uh, PvP nature, although in this case, most likely watching the Belveth from high above doing nothing. So the Echo is doing red Krugs Raptors. We are doing Raptors Red Krugs. This clear... For both junglers is the staple, right? This is the thing you're kind of looking to do. But the early pressure is what we like. The Na'vi basically walks in and ints. And literally walks in and ints before the Belveth even arrives. But the Belveth is able to shop and hits a beautiful W. But also that was a terrible flash and gets a kill on the Kaiser. Now, why is this the most important thing about this game? As we flash and E and... Belveth main for you, everybody, with the new skin. There we go. Echo in the meantime says, hey, yo, I'm going to gank mid lane onto the bird. Give me my bird. Iron Man 2 memes. And it doesn't even proc the passive. Which, from a Nivea's case here, okay, cool, I get to stay in lane. But then now I have no passive and no flash and I get killed, guaranteed. So, hey, we have TP. We can get back nice and easy. Echo decides to go for the blue buff invade, which we know, from Belveth's perspective, is the most important. So, everything so far seems fine. Yes? Good? Red side quadrant, gank. Echo does red side, ganks mid lane. We see him go up, which means we know this is a possibility. So this is most likely a dead Yax, because this should be pinged off. The guy is chilling. The Belveth is rotating directly. He's going to force flash on the Panther, flash in and get the bonk himself. And now we're like, well, is Echo in the area? Where did Echo go? And I think here, there's something really interesting to note. How far do you go in terms of shadowing your top laner here? And I think... From a hyper carry perspective as a wasted E here, just go push the wave. Like literally just go up to the jacks and push the wave. So from a carry 1v9 perspective, let's just pause this scenario because I'm sure most of you, as we see the trifecta of Bermuda's Triangle of Doom, you're thinking, well, you know, if I'm Master Yi or Karthus or a farmer or something, I don't want to do this, right? I want to do my... I want to take the scuttle crab first and foremost. Like I'm going to ping the jacks off. If he dies, he dies. It's his fault. I want to take the scuttle. Do Grump Wolves. This should be up at 355, so I can hit that, hit that, and then hit that again. That's technically what you should be looking to do while also shadowing in for mid lane cuts and ganks as necessary. But the Belveth decides, hey, I know the Echo's here. This is a great solo kill by the Jax. I better shadow this. Now, this player also plays a little bit of Volley Bear, which at this particular point is a Destiny 2 uh, sponge monster that does nothing but absorb hits from Riot as I refuse to buff him. You see the Echo here. What I would have done is just gone straight up and pushed the wave. Get the full deny, push the wave, don't loiter. Like, all of this is good shadowing. Now, once you've done that, don't E. Go straight to the wave. Shove it, crash it. This guy gets to go back to base. He has TP, Pantheon does not. You can fall back down. Take this sucker right here, and then you can fall back to your camps. And obviously, you can shadow mid lane as necessary. Echo also hasn't done his blue side, which means you currently have a little bit of tempo advantage here in that you can do this, 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 and then you can shadow down bot lane and cut out these camps if he were to gank it, right? So he has a lot of strategic options available to him, but... And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Vakayu, founder of Vakayu.gg. I have helped tens of thousands of junglers reach their ranked goals from gold all the way up to challenger. And I make this content to help you climb with jungle 10 times faster. If you want help implementing this information into your own game, I have a free jungle improvement resource and a dedicated program, including jungle courses, weekly classes, private videos seen nowhere else, a full backlog of coaching VODs and more. And that is linked directly below. That's not the question, right? question was, should I do what the Belveth is doing here and shadow the Jax to this degree? No, not if you're a 1v9 jungler. That's technically not what you should be doing. And again, we didn't even do it properly. But the, 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 the thought process isn't incorrect, right? The thought process isn't incorrect. My laner won solo. The enemy jungler could interact with it. Let me cut off that jungler from impacting that lane at all. Deny them, but I deny myself, but I, I deny them as well. And then my laner can run away with the lead. So, the mentality there, good. My point of view, would I sacrifice so much? No, I wouldn't. Basically, I would say, look, Jax, it's on you. I'm pinging it. The Echo's there 100%. You know the Echo's going to be there. Why, you know, you're trading, you're pushing, you get the kill, cool, just leave, right? Don't die to the Echo. That's, I trust you. If you die to it, I pinged it, it's on you. 
But when you take your hands off the wheel like that, you know, the jacks could die, the Echo Snowballs, and now you're a little bit in a doomed scenario as uh, ADCs kill each other, right? Now, we have to pause again because it is a coaching video on the coaching channel. But here, by not shoving this wave, we lose the ability to force Echo to hold, which means we lose the Scuttle Crab. Echo, in the meantime, now will go back to base, get his blasting one early, can shout it out to this particular scenario down here, and we've cut out our Grump from our sequencing because we're afraid that the Echo might go from the Scuttle to the Grump. I think that's unlikely. The Echo hadn't based yet, he just wanted Scuttle and reset, right? Because he's just sitting top lane with no camps up. So what you could have done is still Grump, Wolves, cut in here, cut down here as well, and you could have still cut into this. But I would not sacrifice my Grump for this Scuttle whatsoever. We're looking to gank a Yone here who has all sums. It's obviously a Yone as well. He goes for the E for some particular reason, uh, which means he's going to get knocked up. We can then Q him first, force a flash. We Q again, we E suck. Whew, not quite enough, but now we know the Echo's down here with his Blasting 1, so we have to be careful. Not a fan of this pathing at all. Now, the Yone did really dumb things. That's giga stupid, but it's fine. Impact the lane, right? Shadow to protect from the enemy jungler. Cool. Take two camps, gank this lane, force some sums. Cool. We see the Echo show up, and now we're on our way to Krugs. We telegraphed where we are. The Nivea is pushing to be greedy. She's going to back out here. Oh, she's not. She didn't see it. She didn't see it. How did she not see it? He walked on it. The Yone uses the E again. This is possibly the worst Yone I've ever seen in my entire life, which is saying a lot. Uh, come back, Yone, please. And we do have Egg Passive here. But Veth, in the meantime, has done Krugs. You're watching this, and you say, hey, uh, Kais is low. Maybe I can impact that. Scuttlecrab is still available. Egg is burned. Yone runs away. W's coming in from the Echo. We're going for the Scuttle Crab. We're not rotating to this at all. See, I feel like now you could rotate to these things. Definitely smite. Yeah, that's good. Level 3. Level 3. We miss a W. That's huge. That's huge. We have no Qs anyway. So what you're seeing here is not good pathing from either jungler. It's not good, right? But you take stock and you're saying, right, 6 kills. Draven has run away with the early lead. And remember, what's the whole point of this first and foremost. This, what I'm watching here is giving me a bit of brain damage, but what's the point of Raptors Red Crux? Snowball the bottom lane. When you have a Draven, an aggressive lane, snowball the bottom lane. Because the enemy jungler is either a Draven, an Echo, a Rek'Sai, something broken, a Hecarim sequencing down, they're gonna show up, right? And, and then Nami was standing still AFK, basically semi-trolling that level one. And now imagine Echo does right side quadrant, cuts down and goes for the dive because you did this when topside, right? Wolves are up. This is this is very low elo stuff from the Belveth here. Uh, leaving camps up randomly, sacrificing too much of their own econ. I think there's a happy medium between, hey, can I shadow this lane? And hey, I need my own econ. And you've got to really get used to that balance. You've got to get used to sometimes you cannot superhero every lane. Sometimes your laners are going to die. It's their own damn fault. And as long as you can deny the enemy jungler in other ways, that's good, right? So... If the Ajax dies to this after the solar kill, after you pinged it out, that's on him a little bit. But I did like the shadow, right? I, I did like the shadow in terms of, hey, I know Echo's in the area, let me just push the wave out with you. It's a little bit, you know, well, it's it's worth the time invest because you should be able to get the scuttle from it. But the Belveth and skipping the Grump for the fear of invade is silly. We see the Echo go back up with the Pantheon. Now the Jax is going to ward this most likely to be collapsed upon. The Belveth is just now farming and catching up from the lack of econ that she's had because of the overcompensating pathing and now she's just hands off basically the they're all here why is he leashing why is he leashing the no the jacks is proxying like we know the echoes here as well no mana so if you are the echo and you do get the kill in the Nivea which is great uh you, you know <laughs> tough shit also, though, I wouldn't have even gone for the top side. I think the Echo wasted a lot of time, and I think this is the most important thing as the Jax tries to do a lot of stuff. The most important thing about the Echo strategy was, hey, red side quadrant, look mid lane, go out for the blue steel, shadow, get nothing, push off. He just compromised his own econ as well. Both junglers did the same thing. And now the Echo, instead of just doing red side quadrant and, and looking at mid lane and then coming on down and doing his blue side, most importantly, he could then impact bottom lane while Belveth was top side. 100% Belveth would be topside. And you get to offset the Draven's lead from the Belveth. The Echo saw the Belveth make a good aggressive clear on the bottom side here. Not really aggressive, but a good active clear to get the Darien snowballing. And the Echo didn't do anything to help. 
So now, hands off the wheel, watching Draven run away with bot lane. And all Belveth has to do is shadow lanes and ensure that Echo doesn't do anything. Okay? So let's see what the Belveth ends up doing that results in getting 10th in this particular game. Now, 10th is not always... Uh, it doesn't always mean anything, right? It's a bit of a <laughs> hyperbolic statement of, hey, this is the worst player in the game. No, it's not the case. At this point, it's the Pantheon. But we're going to snack this up. We obviously don't have True Form, which is the downside to our shenanigans, right? We didn't get True Form from that dragon, which is fine. Echo will have, obviously, his ultimate to use on us. The Kai'Sa is able to kill the Nivea. Draven's going to rotate here. This is not the fight you want. This is not the fight you want. That's why the dragon is really the result of your good early game. Like, you res you give yourself that dragon, right? Because of your sequence and me good. Because of everything else you did that was good. So you are six. You take the dragon. You get true form. And now we can chain together some, some resets in that fight. But, you know, objectives. Shadowing lanes again. Draven is good. Woo! A little close. Draven is good. Into the uh, Kraken Slayer rush, obviously. Echo now shadowing up into the top side here. Knows he can get this RNG scuttle. Could hit this down. I would hit this down to see what's going on, right? Just to see what camps are available. You wouldn't see the Belveth, but I just want confirmation. And also it denies the Belveth. I don't want Belveth to hit this and see stuff when I could be doing the Herald, right? Like this for me is important in terms of vision denial because there's no plant here now, it's here. So you hit this, no one can check if you're on the Herald. And if the map is dark, the Belveth is not going to necessarily want to go and face check it. Obviously Jax is winning, so... I would want to face check it if Jax was to come with me, which you can see here, right? You can see that's, what, that's what's exactly what's happening. But they don't hit the plant, they just literally face check. I don't feel that stressed right now uh, if I'm Belveth. The Belveth is playing very antsy. Like you, you're, you're rotating to things that are happening in your head that have a very low probability of happening in the game. Does that make sense? I think we could have just gone wolves into Gromp into blue. We could have hit this plant if we were that concerned about it, but Echo's not going to be going for this with Jax prior. You know, and this control wood I don't really like, but, you know, I get it. Wow. Wow. Uh, that E lasts way too long, though. That range is still ridiculous. But, uh, you know, I don't play I don't play modern mobility champions. I'm stuck in with dinosaur champions. So now what we can do is a little loop path, yes? We can basically say, look, we check this, we push them off, we do this, this, this. We loop back, right? And we can go do this now. Even within vision, but hopefully the vision will die by the time you get them because Echo's here. If Echo shows up here, we can go anyway, because prior. Let's see. Pull it out with your W or just walk in. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So if you're going to do this, if you're guaranteed going to loop, right? Ward, push off, blue, grump wolves. Don't go this way. Go back this way and then sneak in over this wall, right? Like, you see that? Just there. And then you won't be seen. No one have any idea that you're doing it. Now they categorically know you are doing it. Not that that's an issue because they should know that you're doing it. But the Kai'Sa is now 5 for 1. The Draven's now 5 2 1. Gold amounts. 6,000 Draven, 5.5 for Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa is a strong ADC as well. Belveth goes into the pit, we'll get this for free. In this case, the jungling is fine. We're 1 0 1, while the whole map is killing each other. The most important thing for you is not to die. He does die. Hey, you know, be, you know what would suck is if we used that Herald there and got ISO plates? Don't do that. Don't do that. Why would you ward this? Why would you want this? You know it's gone. Like, there's no point. This game is stressing me a little bit now. I'm curious how you get 10th in this game, actually. That's more the qu <laughs> that's more the question. That's okay. Shiro's climbing, right? Belveth gaming. A little weird, though, right? Like, it's okay, but it's weird. Wish Orn would have gotten a cosmic forger skin or something. Echo has now decided to go outside in and say, Yo, can I steal your raptors? Because I have, obviously, the prior here from the Yone. W being placed by... The Echo gets the stun there, decides to go in. Belveth obviously has E. You want to make sure you're not getting spaghetti sucked and gets killed by that. From the Belveth's perspective, you want to basically say, hey, I took this. I know Echo was bot side. Yone was bot side. Everyone was bot side. <laughs> Just throw croaking there. We see the Yone here. Once this is gone, the assessment in your mind has to be, hmm, Mythic Completion, Boots, Dark Seal, Control Ward, Level 7, Alt Available. Oh, sorry, Alt is not available. My mistake there. But Yone is here with prior and your Nivea has seen a few too many years looks more like a pterodactyl in terms of age than a modern bird so basically you but you go okay you got my raptors good job guy and basically once you see it in the brush don't show don't show go the long way around and put a control wood here go to your krugs and shatter the bot lane because the next thing is the echo translates that to a bottom lane gank and our nami in this brush could 
be easy sushi. So what we want to do is shadow and counter gank it here and then use our Herald to punch up this if there's enough plates. In this case, I would not use it here. We don't need to waste our Herald here. We should try and use it on the mid lane uh, at this particular stage. Just don't die. So the Balveth decides to go in, has terrible risk assessment. Anivia cannot help, gets stuck in the Echo W, uses her E perfectly, has no flash though, gets knocked up by the Yone, and then whew, off we go. Sorry, I got trolled by the timers, man. Get trolled by the time. I'm looking at the frames like you would in game, but unfortunately, the flash is actually available, right? The flash is actually available. Here it isn't, but here it is. And once I play it through the first time and I go back, if I'm sort of breaking it down, <laughs> the timer shows off. Obviously, the Belveth Flash and that. There you go. We know that. Right here. And swoop to doop Also, don't flash there, man. Don't flash. Just ex accept fate, accept death. It's over. Now, the problem with that is Echo is going to get this RNG Scuttle Crab. Look at the pushing bottom lane and say, hey, yo, 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 can we gank this? No, okay, I'm going to fall back to my blue side. Belveth is like, is Echo going to gank the bottom side? It's shoving. Yes, yes, he is. Okay, I need to go do something. The bubble misses. Echo shows up here, gets a beautiful, terrible dive. <laughs> I, was, I had no idea what was going to happen. Should die to the Draven here, walks back in for some particular reason. In the meantime, the Belveth is doing red. You see? So that was terrible, first and foremost. But as soon as you see the Echo ditch, ditch, let's go, ditch, move. Help. Because you don't know that the Nami's going to live. You have no idea that the Nami's going to live here. The Nami should die, right? By all metrics, the Nami should die. Ult is available, obviously. We avoid the, the, the bubble with a little bit too much of a... Uh, see, that's the problem. Right there, that's the problem. You see this mechanically, this kind of stuff? I always talk about misdirected intent. You know, I'm going for Nami, right? But he throws a Q at Draven to make them think he's going on Draven. But if he's timing the sums of the Nami and he knows that there is none... There's no reason to even waste a second of time going for the Draven, right? What you do right now is you go straight in fully for the Nami. You use your Q on her right now and she dies. You can ult out immediately and then run straight to the Soraka. But if Belveth was doing it properly, she would be waiting for you right here and now you die, right? Draven gets a kill, but Belveth gets some true form, some help. And now we do have Herald. And maybe we can shove this. Probably not, but we do have Fishies. So you respawn of the minions and the Fishies. Good enough to push this turret in and take the damage. Hit this turret, right? Take it out of the game. That's what should happen. Fortunately, Echo decides to say, hey, I'm going for Draven's Psych, I'm going for Nami. And Draven's like, you were always going for Nami. Now he should just run. Run, 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 decides to turn back in for no particular reason. And the Nami survives, heal comes through, and the Belveth is like, well, I did my red buff, I better go to the mid lane. He has been burned by the Yone, I'm down three levels to the mid laner. That's never good. At all. In fact, it's terrible. So our risk assessment seems to be the reason. Now we're getting the picture. Now we're seeing how things are developing. Horrific early pathing overall for both junglers in terms of experience and gold snowball. But good for laner shadowing. Echoes 214 because his fighting has been decent except for this terrible moment. And the Belveth dies because her risk assessment here is off and she was lazy here. And then here she was just, I don't know, that was dumb. So now what? And while they've taken this, we lose the Herald. We're not going to get any plates. We have to use it anyway. Dragon spawning, but they're basing. So we're just completely out of whack with our team. Two horrific deaths. One missed counter gank opportunity. Now we're going to greed for this dragon when everyone and their whole team is up and available. That You should be collapsed on here. Echo's not even thinking about like The Echo has gone mid lane from top side. He should be down here. He is level 9. We're level 7. Sirak is basically solo killing us with the dragon. And we're just hoping to get this to get true form and get over the wall, which we do, but we die for it. Not worth. Not worth at all. No reason to go for that. Bot had to base, they took turret, they need to reset. So do camps in the meantime. Raptors, Krugs, Krugs, Raptors, walled up, wait for your team, then join together at the hip and have fun while you win the dragon fight with your fed teammates. So, 1-3-1. One, 0-3-0, zero, zero, Anivia. Despite a little bit of a... There you go, Draven's fed. So Draven is running away with the lead we gave. Jax is running away with the lead that we helped secure just in terms of shadowing, which is cool. And all of that's good. But hopefully you can see how we can do those things for our laners and also get ourselves fed with better risk assessment. Now, Draven's gonna shove up and I think maybe it's possible. Let's have a look. Yep, they over push and die. And now again, we're rotating the fights that are gone. No reason to do that, ever. When a fight is doomed, take camps, get experience, get gold, do something else, push turret. Oh, you guys are dying. Oh, that's so sad. Jack should be hitting this. Like, Jax is doing Krugs. 
Jack should see everyone down here and just go for this. And if he's pushing this, who knows where um, uh, Yone is going to go. Like, he could either join this, go here, go here. We don't know, right? So, the Belveth, take your camps. Mid lane's going to be gone as well. No point even wasting a second of time rotating to that scenario. Echo goes top side. We take the wolf. You see, we're, we should already be on Raptors. Maybe we can kill the Yone with the Jax. See, now we're sequencing. But we should have been sequencing this whole time so we could be done. Yone moves up to the mid lane. We're finishing Krugs. We're la lagging behind our team. The Yone is very not good, though. <laughs> it's not very good. Uh, Soraka burns the Sorelias. We join our team, which, again, that's the right play here. And I think the most important thing is when you're playing like this and having these terrible games, how can we at least be carryable? And I think being proximal to your team in most, of the, in most cases where they want to push turrets, uh, at least getting all the objectives as the lanes are winning, and obviously trying to keep the enemy jungle from killing the laners is one of the best things you can do. You do get exhausted. Uh, Jax is in base, has TP technically, but Draven's just running away with this. I mean, like, now we're running away from our team in a fight that we can actually influence. We're low, but we could definitely influence this. Stay with our team, get healed up. We have E. We can get another reset for some heal and true damage. That was horrific from the Echo as well. I've not seen this bad mechanics from everyone in one game for a while. Uh, at least at this level. Like, normally we talk about the mechanical level in silver, gold, bronze. You know, talking about those obvious things. We saw it in platinum, a few mishaps, but this is... This is atrocious, which is why mechanics also matter, right? In these environments, wasting flashes, going in in the wrong moments, just missing crucial spells, these things add up because they could be kills you're getting, which means it could be turrets you're hitting, which means it could be barons you're snacking, which means it could be inhibitors you're taking. But you're not, because you miss your spells, you waste your flashes, and you go back to base with 10,000 gold or zero gold. Make mental notes of that. Right, 1-3-2, red buff taken by Draven, that's cool. Now we go down to the bottom side here. We want to make sure we get the uh, Scuttle Crab. Are we even able to assassinate a Kaiser or anybody? We should be able to. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to. True form is, is good. We'll enjoy the true form at the very least. Kaiser shows bottom lane. We scut out. Cut out the Krugs. Dragon is spawning soon and we're pathing in the wrong direction. So as long as... As long as we loop. See, the thing... The, the, the focal point here was what? Get 11 by the next dragon. Get 11 by the next dragon. That's it. So, Draven's taking our red. That's still going to be available. Just go Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs. Snack this if available. I know you want this. Could also just go Gromp, Wolves, drive by the red, take the Scuttle, loot back Krugs, Raptors, join up with your... Yeah, that's better. This way you get this. You get red, you get Krugs, you get Raptors. You're level 6. Drop the Herald, bot lane maybe. If you have any pressure here, but here's fine as well, because you can really shove it in if you have to use it. Ideally, I would push it with the Jax, which is what I think she was going for, 100%, but then do it from base, right? Let Jax take that pressure as Herald arrives, and now you guys can all go Dragon and push mid and bot, right? A uh, couple options there are available to us. Which one, give us 11. Two, give us two extra camps than we have right now. Three, gives the Jax macro pressure at a better time. And uh, four, just makes a hell of a lot more sense. So... Jax topside with Herald, draws attention as expected, we take the Dragon. Now, dies. Baron up in 20 seconds. We go push this one, that's fine. I don't foresee them greeting for that because Herald's going to push this in. They can push this in. So now a good bit of macro with the Voidfish. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Be parallel because now they're going to collapse and Yone's fed. There you go. Move over, join your team. Yone's in the bottom side now because of our split. That's good. We force the split, Yone shows, now we cut in and join our team. Now we have numbers. Now we chase down. Good, good, good. Much better. There we go. We're getting into a groovy. Hit the turret, hit the turret, hit the turret. Use the magic damage you have and the physical damage you have. Whatever champion you are, Zyra, Fiddle, everyone. Hit the damn turret. Maybe not Fiddle. Because by the time one auto has left Fiddle's hand to hit the turret, the game's finished. At least with Zyra, you actually do decent damage to turrets eventually. And if you uh, remember my Season 9 streaming uh, Zyra Conqueror Nashu days for fun, uh, we did a lot more damage to turrets. Never do that. It was terrible. It was, it was when Conqueror was first released. 12 stacks, plants would stack it. Uh, you know, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Original Broken Conqueror. We're going to go ahead and get that. Draven's actually going to get it. Uh, that's a little bit concerning, but you know what? You know what? The Echo, it's worth the, it's worth the steal because... <laughs> See, now here, this is where it's confusing for me, right? You're going back to base. 
and you don't have stride breaker but we want to get stride breaker as soon as possible it's a, it's a core item here it's a boosted item kraken stride so go ahead and actually take the blue ping him off take this do whatever you need to do to get the gold to get your stride breaker and then get back on the field and you both that so you can queue all the way in you don't want to go back to base you and not have stride breaker it's not good because we could have done blue and, and if we can go pick it up now could have taken wolves could have taken krugs now we're going all these weird power thing. Now we don't have strike. We don't. It's 22 minutes. We have one item, no mythic, and we're splitting. <laughs> and the most important thing that you're learning here is damage the turrets, getting objectives, shadowing lanes, and playing around Wincon when you're having a terrible mechanical game, a terrible pathing game. You're making terrible mistakes overall, but you're doing the things right that win games, and that's the most important thing. Because there's a lot of fishies here, but you are not fed. And again. Even Pantheon has more itemization practicality than you do at this stage. But we live! We live! One more Q from the Pantheon. Here it comes. Here it comes. He's going to hit it. I believe. No, he's not. Good grief, is useless. But we took two people to rotate to us, which means our team actually gets to shove mid lane, which means a wave is crashing here. Pantheon's going to ult to cover it. Exhausted Draven is going to die out of position here, which, again, that's his fault. Now we go back to base. We have the Stripe Breaker. We're going to go into our Blade of the Ruined King next, which is good. Although, hmm, yeah, that's good. That's is good. And now we can go push this wave up here. Let's put it back on this vision. You have got Void. You've got Pressure. And I think this is the most important thing. In games where your KDA is piss useless, in games where you are not very good in any sort of fight, in games where you're just having a bad one, a doozy, a terrible, terrible day. Macro, my, my friends, macro. Hit turrets, take objectives. That's it. Objectives and macro. Puma, 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 puma. And obviously you have better risk assessment in terms of rotating to things. Sorry, it's not really risk assessment, but... Draven! I have a better uh, coaching channel, man. Global Ultimates coaching channel. On the gameplay channel, which is on a hiatus at the moment, all the challenger high players just miss their global ultimates. I... I don't know why it happens or how, but it does. It really does. This is good though. Like, you know, it's not perfect at all, but hey, I'm having a bad day. I'm, I'm winning the game. That's it. You've got to think a bit more like a support, I think. And support players who, or junglers who play support as well, or tanks top lane with low econ, you kind of get it, right? You get the mentality, but you might not get the macro mentality. And it's such a big thing. If you go look at your really giga wins recently, and the losses, and you compare how, many, how much damage you did to turrets between yourself in those scenarios, and also between you and the enemy jungle, you'll see a correlation. Big one. Even this game. Echo did zero damage to turrets. Zero. Balveth didn't do an astronomical amount, but it was some. And obviously did a lot of damage to objectives. We're chasing after the Yo and I feel like we could cut in here, but... You know, now we're stuck between a rock and dead place. I don't really want to be... <laughs> Once you miss that W, you know it's over. Oh, hello, Yone. There we go. That's a kill. We'll get the true form heal. Maybe... No, we do not. No, we do not. Yeah, that was... You know, no. Again, this is not a game that you're going to remember. You're going to say, look, I'm playing like an absolute donkey. <laughs> right. Everyone respawns. Balveth is up. They're pushing uh, the base and... Uh, yeah, looks like they're just going to run it down with brute force, basically. No poetry in this game. No nuance. No sexiness. Sex in, there's no sex in the city, basically. Uh, yeah, real real, uh, real low-quality game. <laughs> That's, again, why it's good to watch all videos on this channel. Because there's a lot of shit you can learn here from a gold, platinum, silver, bronze level. Where you can kind of say, hey, you know... I can do stuff that helps me win the game, but also, these guys, they're not here. You know, they're definitely above me, they're better than me, no stress. You know, you put any of the players in this game against you, if you're silver, they'll run away with it. But, it's very important for you to understand that this is an achievable level, right? You look at this game, you're like, well, I could, I could probably carry this game even now. You know, maybe not every time, but I see things that I would do differently and do better than what they're doing in this game, and that's it. A lot of it is consistency. You just don't consistently do it. But, there we go. A wild 2-4-3 Belfast game in Emerald showcase you some pathing errors, some general errors, and a lot of pain. Vakaido GG for all your courses and all the great private Discord stuff, and as always, I'll see you all in the next one.